Hey everyone, this is Slimin. In today's video, I'm going to review the StellarView 50mm photographic guide scope. A couple of things before we get started. First off, I normally wouldn't review a guide scope, right? Because it's just a guide scope, but this one is packed with features that I think put it a step above the other 50mm guide scope, so that's why I'm going to review it. And then the second thing is, this review is not going to talk about specific guiding performance at all. It's not going to look at PhD graphs or anything like that because all of that depends on a lot of factors. You know, you're seeing your guide camera, what your settings are and all that. This is just going to be a review of the guide scope itself. The Stellar View Photographic Guide Scope weighs in at 18 ounces or roughly 1.1 pounds. Its length varies between about nine and a quarter inch and nine and three quarter inches, depending on if you use an extension tube or not. The machining is excellent and the fit and finish, in my opinion, just ooze that Stellar View quality. The helical focuser has graduated markings and is lubricated quite well for smooth focusing. It also has T-threads for directly attaching T-threaded guide cameras and also has a one and a quarter inch diameter with compression ring focuser for non-marring. The optics are broadband fully multi-coated with a 50 millimeter aperture and 210 millimeter focal length, giving it a focal ratio of f4.2. I've also noticed the guide scope balances really well with the weight of the lens element at the objective end being well balanced by the weight of the focuser and guide camera. You know, it appears to me that a lot of thought went into making this one of the best short focal length guide scopes money can buy. For refractors, the Celestron Rasa series, other short focal length telescopes, I think this is an excellent choice for a guide scope. So I wanted to share my first night experience with the 50 millimeter guide scope and it was an unusual one. Uh, normally when you buy a guide scope, you expect it to be configured for auto guiding, right? Because, well, it is a guide scope. So, you know, you attach you, your camera, you focus in PHD2 or maybe another program, whatever you use, and then you auto guide and hopefully everything works out. I did not have this experience with the 50 millimeter guide scope. Honestly, my first night was a disaster, but that's okay. And that's why I'm sharing this with you. So you don't experience the same thing. So I was imaging M81 and M82, and here's the image I was getting in PHD. You can see it's pretty out of focus, right? So what was going on? Well, I was taking the focuser and going outward as far as I could. Focus was getting worse. Then I was going inward as far as I could. Focus got better, but not good enough before I reached the end of travel. And that's a problem because on outward focus, you can always install an extension tube to get the focus you need. But on inward travel, there's really not a whole lot you could do. So I was worried, why is this guide scope not focusing my camera? And most, most guide cameras have short back focus. So, you know, you kind of assume that the manufacturers know that and would build that into the guide scope. So the next morning I took the guide scope and I analyzed it and discovered, oh, there's a 15 millimeter extension tube pre-installed on this guide scope. And I'll explain why later. But once you remove that 15 millimeter extension tube, then the guide camera can get focused. So you can see my next night on M81 and M82 was much better. All is well, I breathed a big sigh of relief and everything was okay. So I just wanted to share that experience to start this off if you are experiencing focusing troubles with the guide scope, especially on the inward side, just make sure that 15 millimeter extension tube is off before you, before you start. Removing the extension tube is very easy. Just unthread the focuser. And then just take the ring and unthread it. And then just go ahead and re-thread the focuser into the guide scope. Now there is one notable design in this guide scope that I think could easily be overlooked, but I like it, so I'm going to talk about it. And it's the dew shield. Now in a lot of 50 millimeter guide scopes, if you adjust the dew shield, you adjust the focus. And that really bothers me because then you have two places to focus, at the front and at the rear. And changing one can kind of change the other and it's kind of a mess. What's nice about this dew shield is that's all it is. It's a dew shield. It does not contain the lenses at all. They stay in the guide scope body, which is really nice. So if you want to clean your lenses or blow, you know, dust off, get your, your bowl blower and just blow this off real quick and then re-thread on your dew shield and you're not going to change your focus at all. And if you do, it's going to be just barely and you just have to make a slight adjustment at the rear. So that's one thing I really, really like about this guide scope is it does not have two different areas to focus, it's just the one. 
Now at f4.2, this can also be used as a little lens if you want to for your camera. So if you want to practice some astrophotography and see what you can do with a 50 millimeter aperture, 210 millimeter focal length, it should give you some pretty decent results. So let's do some astrophotography with this guide scope just for fun. I'm going to use the ZW-178mm and a Celestron luminance filter. And the reason I want to use this luminance filter is just to kind of see how much chromatic aberration this guide scope has. I mean, obviously it's not optimized for astrophotography, so this is more fun than anything. And then after that, I'm going to use a Celestron red filter to show the difference, what it looks like between luminance and then shooting in a single channel. So this should be pretty fun. I'm going to target M81 and M82 because this 178mm has a relatively small chip. Um, we'll, we'll see how it does. Pretty excited. Should be a fun little experiment. So I decided to shoot in every channel, RGB and in luminance, and I can't believe the results I'm getting right now. I'm in about 20 mile an hour wind if you can't hear it. And I know this guide scope's only 210 millimeters, but still, the results are actually pretty good so far. I'm actually excited to process this data and see what I can do with it. So last night was absolutely crazy. As you saw, there was about 20 mile an hour winds the entire time. They did not let up at all. And I'm shocked I got anything usable out of this camera and guide scope setup. But I did, and not only that, the results are actually pretty decent. And I say decent, not excellent, because you know, this is not designed for astrophotography. You know, you will get some vignetting, you will not see a flat field. But if you crop the images, you can actually take pretty good pictures out of this, especially as you saw in high winds. So the only big mistake I made was with the luminance channel. When I put in the camera with the luminance filter, I accidentally had it turned a little bit. So in Photoshop, when I was rotating everything, I had to rotate the luminance channel quite a bit to get it to line up, and that made me crop out a lot of the stars. So I stitched things together, and overall it looks pretty good. But to be fair, I'm going to show you all my unprocessed channel results and my processed results as well, and uh, we'll go from there. So yeah, check this out. One thing I really like to do with my astrophotos is look at the difference in RGB with luminosity and without it. So this is an RGB photo uh, without luminosity and you can see the color is present obviously, that's the whole point of RGB. When you add the luminosity layer, you really get a lot more detail in the galaxies, you brighten up the image quite a bit and it just looks better with luminance. Now also, you know, you're going to get more chromatic aberration because it is a clear filter and this telescope is not designed for astrophotography, but it's just kind of fun to look at the difference between the RGB and the RGB plus the luminance. So not too bad, right? The results are actually pretty good given the wind conditions and using this 50 millimeter guide scope. Now obviously you saw a decent amount of chromatic aberration in the luminance channel. That's normal, especially given the design of this is not, you know, apple chromatic or anything like that. But the RGB channels are pretty tight, focus is pretty tight, and for being in 20 mile an hour winds, I couldn't be more impressed with this. So I think this actually does have some potential as a little budget astrophotography telescope if you want to try it out. So that was a little fun experiment slash demo and I think this does a pretty good job. One thing that is super neat about this guide scope is it is not just a guide scope. It can also be used as a finder scope. So if you purchase one of these, Stellar View includes a 10 millimeter extension tube. And when you install this, you can use this guide scope as a straight through finder, which is, I think it's pretty cool. It doubles as that. So 
just quickly unscrew the focuser, thread in the 10 millimeter adapter, put the focuser back in, And now, just insert an eyepiece into the one and a quarter inch barrel and secure it, and you have a straight through finder and a darn good one at that. This could be really handy for those that are visual astronomers that want a good finder scope, but also want the option to have a guide scope in the future in case they jump into astrophotography. So you could use it in the visual uh, configuration at first, and then maybe later down the road you get into astrophotography, just take off the 10 millimeter adapter and you're ready to go for guiding. So. The hybrid nature of this guide scope slash finder scope is, uh, is really, really handy and also makes it more worth your money too because essentially you're buying two in one. Now for mounting the Stellar View guide scope, I use the Stellar View rings and I think they call these the Schmidt Cassegrain rings if I'm not mistaken, but these are sweet. Uh, they have nylon tip bolts so they don't mar your guide scope and they have a safety screw on the bottom so if for some reason you didn't tighten it enough and it falls out of your finder shoe it will catch there and not fall out but the best thing is just having a six point system in the past i've used guide scopes that only have three points of contact at the back for adjustments and it's not really the most stable thing this is very very stable so you can get very very minor adjustments to align your telescope and your guide scope on the same thing the same object and once it's there, it pretty much stays there. So these rings are very, very stable. I'd highly recommend them if you are looking at a Stellar View guide scope. I also use the Stellar View finder shoes. These are absolutely awesome. This is the Schmidt Cassegrain specific version. It fits their ass just fine. Uh, but these are beefy and they give you two points of contact, not just one. And that's why I really like them. So they really hold the guide scope in very, very well tighten down and you really don't have to worry about anything moving for the rest of the night. And then as I mentioned, the Stellar View rings do have that safety bar. So for some reason you did tighten them a little bit too loose, it would hit that bar and not fall out. So uh, I've pretty much gone for my guiding setup all Stellar View. Stellar View shoe, Stellar View rings, and a Stellar View guide scope. And it's worked out really, really well. Now I love this finder shoe and I would put it on all of my telescopes if not for one big issue I have with it. And that issue is this angle is a little bit too aggressive for most standard Cinta and Vixen style mounts. So for example, if I had tried to put this ASI Air Pro in here, it does not fit. This angle is a little bit too shallow to fit in this aggressive, aggressive angle, which is such a bummer because this is such a nice quality finder shoe with two points of, of contact. I would put it on all of my telescopes. In fact, I would put two of them on my Rasa, one here and one on the other side, and I'd put two on my Schmidt Cassegrain as well. But because that angle is too aggressive, a lot of those standard accessories won't fit. So I, I do keep one on here, but it's just for my Stellar View rings and guide scope. And one last thing with regards to this shoe, I just wanted to show you a comparison. This is a normal SCT finder shoe. It's tiny compared to this Stellar View shoe. So it's really big, can hold your equipment very securely. It's just that one little angle needs to be updated and then this would become the ultimate finder shoe in my opinion. All right, well that is my review of the Stellar View 50 millimeter photographic guide scope. This is a sweet guide scope from Stellar View. I'm so glad I bought one. I was a little hesitant to buy one at the purchase price, but I am really, really glad I did. It has given me much better performance. It's very versatile. You can use it as a finder scope and as a guide scope, and the six-point ring system has really made my guiding much more stable. So this is a sweet setup for refractors and for uh, short focal length telescopes like the RASA. I hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks so much for watching and clear skies.